There is a huge gap in between reality and what we are being told in the mainstream. Best economy ever, fantastic growth, super amazing, totally awesome. Well, except that isn't what's really going on. If you are willing to see the information that's been gathering, then you will see what most do not. The longer this bubble continues to grow, the more damage it will ultimately inflict. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today I'm going to show you several economic indicators that I believe are being ignored by most of the mainstream. Some of the financial establishments out there have acknowledged that tensions have increased, that there is actually a slowdown, but most cannot get to it in their heads that this is impossible. The Federal Reserve is going to act. How can this ever happen? Stocks fall as chip makers slide and China data disappoints. I don't believe that this small drop in the stock market is of any concern to those who believe that this will go up higher. What you need to understand is the chip makers because they are usually a bellwether for a potential catalyst of an event in the future. That all remains to be seen of course, but keep your eyes peeled for the chip makers. The Fed is likely to drop patient word next week, clearing the way for July cut. According to economists, this is going to be something of a multi-stage process. Most individuals do not believe they will cut at their next meeting, but it will have to then go into the next one after that. This forward guidance that they use, they have these meetings and each and every single word they use is carefully put into their speeches to make the market feel calm and content. Apparently they're going to drop the word patient, they're going to seem like they're bending over backwards for the market and try to ease this a little bit before they have to go through and cut in this ultra low interest rate environment. I'm going to show you several charts here from Double Line Funds. You know him, Jeffrey Goonlock. Euro area new export orders. You can see the PMIs all looking terrible, whether it's Germany, Spain, France, and Italy. They have been declining from 2018 and beyond. It doesn't look good for the European area. European markets have been suffering for quite a bit now because of all of the policies they have tried to implement in order to stabilize all of these nations onto one currency one interest rate something that doesn't work and they are trying to band-aid fix all of the problems each and every single one of these country needs to have its own government deciding its own fate but instead it doesn't work like that these countries here are suffering economically even Germany who is supposed to be the powerhouse not just of Europe but around the world and instead is looking quite terrible in the last several months Korean Stock Exchange Index, this is one that is often seen as the canary in the coal mine. People need to watch this because you can see it here for yourself, how it has declined, how it has come down quite a bit. That's just a chart that I wanted to show you. Now it gets complicated. Global merchandise trade percentage of the total. Yes, the United States has a considerable amount of it, but look at where this has gone from the year 2001 when China joined the WTO. It has grown considerably and has now exceeded that of the United States. U.S. Conference Board Leading Economic Indicator. This is still at 2.7 year over year. You're seeing how there are cycles that appear. However, as soon as this goes down into the negative, according to this, we hit into a recession. There's still a little while to go according to this statistic. But again, when we hit a recession, it's actually much before that, but they only admit it at a later date. This just shows you one indicator of so many of there but of course I wanted to include it I have others to show you as well we must all acknowledge that this is potentially going to be the longest bull market in history you could see here comparing them going back to the 1950s up until the present how we have looked at this expansionary time seeing the length seeing the strength that we have gone through and it is all on the back of not a real economy instead on the back of quantitative easing extremely low interest rates and reckless behavior 
A Morgan Stanley economic indicator just suffered a record collapse. I'll show you the chart in just a second. This drop is the largest one month decline on record. Okay, so we need to understand how significant this pullback is here. The decline shows a sharp deterioration in sentiment this month that was broad based across sectors. It's not just one area. It's not just the S&P. It's not just the NASDAQ. It's not just tech stocks. It's not just happening in China. We are watching all of these around the world that are coming down down right now and it's not just over the past few months notice this has been going on for a little while in 2015 towards 2016 all of the markets around the world started to suffer all of the economies around the world started to suffer but they went into the second round of quantitative easing of really low interest rates of stimulus and so on this allowed these economies to continue to stay alive many of them didn't do as good as they were back in 2015 including China's however it's it seems like the beneficiary in this has been the US because many stock markets around the world have not been able to climb as strong as it. There's no doubt about it. And I'm just showing you here this particular index and where it has gone. It is volatile. That is very clear. However, the biggest drop on record, we're now back at the levels we saw in the financial crisis. Global government bond yields, excluding the U.S., are at all-time lows. We have witnessed so much information that has piled up as of late, and it is showing us today that investors are really concerned about what has happened. They are putting a lot of money into the fixed income. They are choosing stocks that seem safer, less worried about growth, more worried about preservation of capital. This is part of it. Let me show you this. Record six month government bond fund flows you could see how it changed from 2017 where it was all about equities 2018 was looking crazy and by the second half of 2018 this started to rocket higher you could see that here on this particular chart despite the fact that the actual return is very terrible you can see in the case of Germany and many others out there with 11 trillion dollars of negative yielding government debt. My goodness, why is anybody buying this? It has to be the ECB because I can't personally believe that somebody would buy into an investment they know they're going to lose, but that's the state of the markets today. This is Bank of America's BNB indicator just showing you that it is inching ever closer to the extreme bearish category which makes it a buy they're saying that the sentiment out there is so bearish that people will be buying like crazy at some point but I'm not so sure about that we've already seen so much bullish sentiment I'm not sure it can get any higher this to me seems like it is quite the opposite of what the media is reporting America's CFOs are bracing for a 2020 recession in fact Nearly half, 48% of chief financial officers in the United States are predicting the American economy will be in recession by the middle of next year. 69% of those executives are bracing for a recession by the end of 2020. I'm just trying to give you an idea of the sentiment that's going out there with people in the financial industry. You can see Bank of America's fund manager surveys. You can look at the other stats that they are always pulling out there. Take a look at the fund flows because you don't have to believe what they say. You can actually just see what they are doing. The EPFR provides that data. I have shown you it on countless occasions and we look at all of that because it gives you an insight as to what is actually happening. Not believe leaving what the mainstream media says, not taking their word for it, but simply looking at the data. The majority of people do not know how to look at the data. They simply look at the mainstream and they hope they can pull enough from it. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Every time a cycle goes over, flips over, people get burned by it because they don't know how to prepare. And then last but not least, Jeffrey Goonlock just wanted to bring a full circle here. Apparently, he predicted a 40 to 50% chance of a U.S. recession within the next six months and a 65% chance of it happening in the next 12 months. That's according to his webcast to his clients. I think that this is something that's very hard to predict. It is so hard, especially to put numbers based on it. And that's something that I wouldn't do. But I just wanted to bring it to you because this is one of the most important people in the financial 
financial system today being hailed as the new bond king he is somebody that we should be paying attention to whether or not you do anything with your portfolio as a result of the information it's just good to know there are many reasons why today things have gotten way too hot way too over accelerated and usually it gets pulled back as a result not in the short term but events that do take place will usually wipe people off their feet so we're gonna see it I'll track it here and I will create some videos obviously that's all for this video if you found it informative please give me a thumbs up when you give me a like on this video you're supporting me so I do appreciate that very much if you want the financial education you were not taught in school these two books have everything you need from top to bottom A to Z you can get all the details at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at the money gps.com if you want to find out what's going on in the real economy you should watch this video I break it down for you make it easy check it out if you haven't seen it already click on it and I will see you there